The US military just made a move that's shaking up the entire world of small arms. A major shift. After decades of relying on the trusted 5.56 and 7.62 NATO rounds, there's a new king in town. Not a modification, not a niche specialty cartridge, but an all-out replacement. The old debate about smaller bullets for more ammo versus bigger rounds for more stopping power? That debate just got sidelined completely. The brass didn't pick a side. They rewrote the rules. This isn't just a caliber swap. It's a massive recalibration of how the American infantry engages threats on the battlefield. The era of spraying and praying is winding down. It's now about precision, range, and sheer stopping power. That new era starts with one cartridge, the 6.8x51mm, also known in the civilian world as the .277 Sig Fury. This round is no compromise, it's not a slightly hotter 5.56, and it's not just a trimmed down 7.62. It's an entirely new breed. It's throwing a 140 grain bullet at roughly 3,000 feet per second. That's nearly double the muzzle energy of a standard 5.56 round. And the kicker? It's doing all that while operating at a blistering 80,000 PSI chamber pressure. That's not a typo. Most military rifle rounds operate around 60,000. This is punching into a whole new class. To handle that extreme pressure, the cartridge uses a hybrid case, steel base and brass body. That's not just a gimmick. The steel base prevents the case from rupturing under intense pressure, while the brass body still allows for reliable extraction. Without that engineering, the round wouldn't just be powerful, it would be dangerous. But with it, it's controlled aggression in a chamber. And this isn't power for power's sake. This cartridge was designed to meet one very real, very modern threat. Adversaries equipped with serious armor. Level 3 and 4 plates are becoming common. And the old 5.56 just isn't up to the task. Reports from the field have shown it over and over. Multiple hits to center mass on an armored target and the enemy keeps fighting. That's not a problem with soldier skill. That's physics. The round just doesn't have enough juice. The 6.8x51 changes that dynamic entirely. It brings energy, velocity, and penetration to the fight, out to 600 meters and beyond. At 1,000 yards, it's still hitting harder than 5.56 does at 5. That's game-changing. Infantry squads no longer have to rely on volume to achieve terminal results. Now, one or two hits can end a fight. That alone transforms combat doctrine. It shifts the entire focus from how fast you can lay down fire to how accurately you can deliver it. When a single round has that kind of authority, tactics evolve. Fire teams can engage from greater distances without losing lethality. Cover and concealment suddenly work in their favor, not just the enemies. Suppression becomes smarter, more efficient, Squads can maneuver, knowing they have real punch behind each shot, even at extended ranges. That kind of assurance boosts morale and shifts the psychology of the fight. Targets that used to require coordinated volleys can now be neutralized with precision. And with better hit probability, troops spend less time exposed. It's not just a step up in firepower, it's a step up in survivability. There's a newfound confidence when soldiers know they're carrying rounds that don't just poke holes, but stop threats cold. And that changes how they think under pressure. They're not reacting. They're deciding. It's no longer about overwhelming with numbers. It's about asserting control with fewer, more deliberate actions. When the fight begins, having that kind of edge means everything. And from the brass down to the boots. That advantage is being felt across the board. And, yeah, the recoil is more than the 5.56. But it's still manageable. It's not a shoulder destroyer like a full 7.62 battle rifle. It's sitting right in the sweet spot. More kick, but not too much for trained shooters to control. That's crucial when you're firing from unstable positions, under stress, 
on the move. What really sets this round apart, though, is how it stacks up against its predecessors. Take the 5.56 NATO. Light, fast, minimal recoil. That round was built for jungle warfare, close quarters, and high ammo counts. Great in its time, but times have changed, threats have changed, and most importantly, armor has changed. The 5.56 starts dropping hard after about 300 meters. It's fast, but it loses steam quickly. Then there's the 7.62 NATO, powerful, yes, carries weight and recoil to match. It's got punch out to 800 meters, sure, but it's heavy. Each round weighs about 25 grams, and you can't carry as many. The recoil's in the neighborhood of 17 foot-pounds, which starts to matter in full auto or rapid fire situations. That kind of recoil adds up fast, especially when you're in dynamic movement or firing from unsupported positions. Over time, it wears on the shooter, slower follow-up shots, reduced accuracy, and increased fatigue. Plus, the weight adds another layer. Every extra ounce matters when you're hauling gear through rough terrain. And when you're limited in how many rounds you can carry, every trigger pull becomes a bigger decision. The platform itself also tends to be bulkier, making transitions between targets slower and less fluid. In close quarters, that matters. In mountainous regions, that matters. Even for seasoned troops, the 7.62's punch comes at a physical cost. And on top of that, maintaining tight shot groups becomes harder under sustained fire. It's not just about the first shot, it's about the third, the fifth, the tenth. Heat builds up, muzzle climb becomes more of a factor. And when you factor in the realities of combat, adrenaline, movement, stress, the heavier platform becomes less forgiving. It's still a workhorse, no doubt but it's a workhorse built for a different kind of war. In today's fights, agility matters just as much as power. And that's where the 7.62 starts to feel its age. It's got muscle, but it lacks finesse. The battlefield has evolved, and now so has the tech. That's why the next step wasn't just about matching the 7.62, it was about outclassing it entirely. Now here's the kicker. The 6.8 by 51 matches 7.62 for weight and recoil, even slightly edging it out in muzzle energy, but delivers way more performance downrange. Soldiers will be carrying fewer rounds, sure, but they'll need fewer to win the fight. It's not about throwing 30 rounds anymore, it's about landing 5 that count. That change in philosophy is at the heart of this shift. It's no longer about overwhelming with lead. It's about surgical hits from farther out, and it doesn't stop at the bullet. The rifle platform is brand new, too. Meet the M7 rifle, set to replace the M4A1 for frontline troops. It uses a short-stroke gas piston system, which is a big departure from the classic direct impingement setup on the AR. And there's a good reason for that. These rounds run hot and hard, you need a platform that can take the punishment. On top of that, it comes factory equipped with an integrated suppressor. That means less muzzle flash, less sound signature, and way better communication for squads under fire. Ergonomically, it still feels familiar to anyone trained on AR-style rifles. So the learning curve isn't steep, but the performance, a whole different animal. Then there's the M250, the new belt-fed machine gun that's replacing the M249. It's lighter, has built-in recoil mitigation systems, and sends those 6.8 by 51 mm rounds downrange with authority. Out past 600 meters, this thing still defeats body armor. That turns the squad automatic weapon from just a suppressive tool into a real precision support weapon. And it's not just about hardware. Training is changing, too. Live fire ranges at Army posts are being extended out to 1,000, 500, even 1,800 meters in some places. Soldiers are being trained for longer distance engagements with more accurate fire. That means new shooting disciplines, 
less reliance on mag dumps at close range, and way more focus on deliberate, effective hits. They're also being trained on the XM157 fire control optic. That's not just a fancy name for a scope. This thing is a ballistic computer. It calculates range, drop, wind, and environmentals in real time. It's like having a sniper's spotter and a weather station in your optic. Paired with the 6.8x51, it gives soldiers an insane increase in hit probability, even under stress. It's no longer point and shoot. It's operate and execute. The shooter is now a systems operator, managing a full data-driven combat platform. And yes, there's less ammo in each loadout. Soldiers aren't carrying hundreds of rounds like before. But each round counts more. And when they see what this thing does to a steel plate at 700 meters, the confidence level spikes. That kind of psychological edge, the knowledge that your rifle will reach farther and hit harder than the enemies, that matters in a firefight. That wins fights before they even start. Of course, whenever the military changes caliber, the civilian world pays attention. The .277 Sig Fury is the commercial twin of the 6.8x51. And it's already available. And make no mistake, it's a monster. High ballistic coefficient bullets, flat trajectories, and devastating energy at long range. Hunters and precision shooters are already eyeing it for big game at long distances. Elk, moose, hogs, this cartridge takes them down clean, even when other rounds start to fall short. But this performance doesn't come cheap. That hybrid steel and brass case is complex to manufacture. It's not as simple as turning out traditional brass. And because of that, prices are high for now. Rifle platforms are limited too. A few bolt guns, some of SIG's cross-series rifles, and that's about it. At least for now. Reloading is technically possible, but tricky. That steel head changes the game, and handloaders are still figuring out the best way to get consistent results. It's not beginner-level gear. But for those who get it dialed in, it's a whole new playing field. And don't let the myths cloud the reality. This is not a weak round because it's a smaller caliber. It outperforms 7.62 in energy, velocity, and armor penetration. It's not old tech dressed up in new clothes. It's not recycled from World War II. It's cutting-edge hybrid case science running at insane pressures. And no, it's not a solution in search of a problem. Ask any soldier who's had to dump a mag of 5.56 into a plated target to little effect. This round fills a real and pressing need. Weight? Sure, it's heavier per round. But again, you need fewer. And this isn't about long, dragged-out exchanges anymore. This is about quick, decisive action. Delivering impact where it counts. Less ammo, more effect. The big picture? This isn't just a new bullet. It's the first domino in what could be a total rethinking of how military small arms work. Other branches of the U.S. military are watching closely. If this performs the way early results suggest, Wider adoption is almost guaranteed. The only big challenge ahead is NATO standardization. For decades, the Alliance ran on 5.56 for one reason. Logistics. Everybody used the same mags, the same ammo, the same resupply chain. That's now out the window. The 6.8x51 doesn't just require different weapons. It demands new manufacturing processes. If it catches on, other NATO countries will either have to make their own hybrid ammo or go another direction entirely. And that opens up a whole new frontier. If this hybrid case tech scales up and proves durable, it could breathe new life into classic calibers. Imagine a point .308 or point .243 built for 80,000 PSI with better velocity, flatter trajectory, and more downrange impact. That's the direction things are headed. So the story here isn't just about replacing two legacy rounds. It's about what comes next. About how small arms are entering a new era where performance isn't just good. It's optimized, data-backed, 
designed for the threats of tomorrow, not the ones from 50 years ago. This new caliber is changing everything. From the cartridge to the optic, the rifle to the range, the mission to the mindset. Precision is in, power is in, and the days of relying on outdated ballistics? They're numbered. The real question now isn't whether this is the future. It's how fast the rest of the world catches up. Thanks for sticking through this deep dive. If this breakdown helped shed some light on what's really changing behind the scenes, hit that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe for more real-world weapon system analysis and tactical insight. There's more coming, and you won't want to miss it. Stay sharp, stay trained, and stay ahead of the curve.